I think many of you did this. And uh, again, this is um, looking at, well, I can get a confidence interval from my uh, original data. I can also get my confidence interval from synthetic data based on the combined neural. So naturally, we want to compare how close those uh, confidence intervals are. And then one way to do this as a utility measure, actually, is the interval overlap. Okay? Interval overlap, not very complicated. What we're trying to do is you get the two confidence intervals and then um, return those few measures, and then in the end, we're able to do that to look at the overlap of the okay? So let's suppose LS and US, that is the uh, upper, lower and upper bounds uh, from the synthetic data. So that's why we have the subscript S. And then LO and UO, they are from the original confidential data, okay, the bounds. So from before, we already computed them, so you should be able to do it. And then we define this Li and Ui as the intersection of the two intervals. Okay, so the lower one, well, I mean, the Li will just be the max of the Ls and Lo because it's the intersection, right? And then the upper bound will be the minimum between the Us and Uo. Okay. So I think that, again, overall um, intuitive. And then the measure is called I. Okay. What they do is they're looking at the difference between the intersection, which is so pretty much this is the length of the intersection um, confidence interval, right? Big difference. But we're like looking at it, it's, um, I mean, in, uh, like with respect to the original, the length of the original confidence interval and then the length to the synthetic confidence interval. And then the thing is, if the two are very similar, if UO, LO, and US, LS, they're very similar to each other, then this I will be closer to one because, well, um, this will be about one half, this will be about one half, right? So it will be, um, I will be closer to one. But if you have intervals with a little overlap, then the I will be closer to zero or, pro or like approximately zero. And then that will indicate low utility. So we know that high utility, meaning that the two intervals look very similar to each other. And actually, once you compute them, you already have the intuition that, well, maybe they're too far away, or maybe they're close enough. But this utility measure is really here to help us to make sure that, well, we can get a measure out of this, and then make sure that we can uh, report this. And then, especially if you're thinking about using different syn synthesis models to deal with the same problem, and then you want to compare across different models, then those will be important things to return and then as a measure to, to check how well you do. Lastly, um, well, you can do interval for, for this particular estimate, but you can do interval uh, overlap for other um, estimates as well. So if you have multiple to return, then you can just average the values of i and then obtain your summary. And we do that a lot of times for, for like once you do multiple, how can I get a final summary? And then taking the average might not be the best, but at least it will do. All right, so for the example that we did, so we did two examples, so I'm just gonna walk through them. This again, a little bit tedious, you sort of have to like supply all the values to the LS, US, LO, UO, and also LI and UI, and then you do the I measure over here. And so for the first one that was uh, we did it last time on third, I mean last Tuesday, that we had the synthetic um, partial synthesis where the log expenditure is unsynthesized and log income is synthesized from the simple linear regression model. So we got this two um, confidence intervals without doing the I value or I measure. We can see that they're pretty close, right? I mean the lower bounds are only off by 0 0.1, 0 0.01 actually, and then the upper bound is only off by 0.02. And so naturally, it wouldn't be too surprising that uh, the utility, uh, the um, I utility here wouldn't be, yeah, would be pretty, pretty high. Okay, so in this case, about 0.9, very good. The other one, again, now because my variance estimate was off, so this will be off as well. Uh, but regardless, I think it wouldn't be as high as, um, as the previous one. Okay, so in this case, we have slightly lower um, high measure over here. So whenever you're doing confidence interval um, estimation, you can always use this interval overlap. Okay? And then this will be a very useful analysis-specific utility measure that you can have for your model.
And um, the interval could be point estimate, like mean, et cetera, et cetera. But it can also be uh, for regression analysis. And as you can see that, as long as you're dealing with some kind of numerical variable, uh, this type of uh, analysis specific thing will be very commonly used. All right, so I did, um, I add a couple of things when we cover this um, together here. So we talked about mean or like regression analysis. So those are the ones that you're able to get the point estimate or the variance estimate from either just taking the mean and variance or from the LM function, right? They are readily available to you if you are doing it on the synthetic data. But there are things that might not be available to you directly. Okay, so medium, oh, what is the point estimate? What we can take the medium? What was the variance of the medium? I mean, there's no analytic solution for that. So when you see things like this, but you still want to return them and see how good the measure is, because for some of the, depends on what you're doing, but for some of you, maybe it makes sense to check the medium instead of the mean. For example, if you have a skewed distribution, like a numerical variable, maybe you want to check the median instead of the mean, right? So when that happens, well, you can use Bootstrap. Okay. So I don't know if everybody um, knows about Bootstrap. Okay, so the short answer is this is a simulation-based approach, okay? What you can do is instead of, well, for medium, we unfortunately do not have an analytic solution for, for its variance. What you do is you resample um, based on the sample that you have, and then resample it for a large number of times, and let's say 1,000 times or 10,000 times, and get the various estimates out there. Okay. So happy to chat more in person. I mean, after class or later, like doing class, you have the question. Um, I didn't include any um, code for doing bootstrapping, but I'm happy to add that later or like send it to you directly if that's what you want to do. But bootstrap, again, it's a very commonly used technique when you um, do not, say in this case, working with a um, Quantity that is not analytically available for some of the like either point estimate or the uh, or the variance estimate, and uh, that is pretty handy. So think about well, if you have encountered this before, great. So this could be uh, something you can borrow from what you learned before, or if you haven't, well, this will still be a useful tool in your toolbox um, for the future. Okay. And another thing I think we already talked about, especially like last time, I think. Um, Maggie and Isaac, I think, showed us on their write-up about how M, like the value of how many syntax data sets are you doing, might affect your data utility. So this, I think, uh, is definitely something worth keeping in mind. Okay. You might want to do a little bit of investigation once you have done all of your like general synthesis approach, like you have your model written up, you have all of the ways that, like the code ready for changing M pretty flexibly, and then later you can maybe do an investigation on that. Okay. Um, the general idea is that the larger the M, uh, the higher the utility, okay? Uh, but we also know that we want to make sure that, um, because on the other hand, if you think about that you're generating or you're simulating, you're releasing more copies of synthetic data, you might uh, unexpectedly or like unintentionally, I should say, Increase the uh, uh, confidentiality because you're releasing more of them. Okay? So, we're going to go now talk about how to evaluate the identification disclosure risk for categorical data. Um, but M is another thing. I mean, again, M matters a lot for, for both utility and uh, confidentiality, like the risk. Okay. All right, any questions? Comments? All right, so, um, well, we can either do in pre presenting your um, synthesis models for your um, project first, or we can do the, um, the last bit of lecture about how to do the identification risks first. Which one do you prefer? Do you want to do, I mean, 